this is our finished results of our greens, our turnip and mustard greens and bottoms. This is the finished results. And you see all this liquid they call that, you know what they call that? They call it pot liquor. <laughs> pot liquor is used when you got a lot of children and a lot of people coming over to eat. You get you a big piece of cornbread and put it in a bowl and put that pot liquor and these greens on top of there and one of these uh, turkey nets. Boy, that is good country eating. This is what this is. So those uh, bottoms are tender. The meat is tender. And look at that pot liquor. The greens are tender. This is down home south cooking, y'all. I'm sorry, but this is what this is. Okay, this is Sandra. Following this presentation, I will show you how to clean your greens, how to distinguish what to keep and what to discharge, and how to cut your turnip bottoms and how to clean them. This is Sandra. I want to tell you happy eating and thank you for coming to my channel. Hi, this is Sandra. I'm here again We're showing you another classic that's in Mississippi. These are greens. These are mustard greens. Okay, right these are mustard greens. I bought them yesterday. And these are turnip greens. They have the turnip bottoms underneath there. Now I like missing, I like to mix turnip greens and mustard greens together when I cook them. So I want to show you how the difference. Now the mustard do not have any bottoms to them. They just cut them off. And they, I love mustard a whole lot better than I love the turnips. But you know a lot of people like turnips because they have their big turnip root on the bottom. Now you cook these. I'm going to show you how to chop these off. Now these are the turnips and you cut them at the bottom like this. Cut them off like that. That's how you cut them. You cut them like that and then you peel them. Now some people don't peel them but I do. Now turnips is related to rutabakers. I showed you how to do a rutabaker recipe y'all and rutabakers are my favorite. My daughter Kelly loves rutabakers. So what you do is cut this purple off. Now if you want to keep them on there you can but I always cut them off because it's just not I guess cut them off my mama did. I don't know. But you cut them off and some people boil them like this and eat them whole like this. But what I do I cut them in chunks. I cut them in chunks like this. And they go in after the greens are all done. Now they said we boil too much nutrients out of greens but I guarantee you the nutrients might be boiled out the greens but the nutrients ain't too boiled out of this <laughs> because this has that nutrient in there because it's a good flavor for uh, root vegetable so I cut them like that now you can cut them uh, any way you want but I like to cut mine like that so you can see them in the greens that's how you cut that. Now that's how you do those turnips. Now we're going to cut them all off of this. Get them all out the way. And cut this off. Get this all out the way. Now I buy turnips greens like this. It depends on how many bottoms on them. They call them bottoms y'all. Okay now. All I do is take this little rope off. They put them together. Now in Mississippi, I get these at Piggly Wiggly. They got a better value than Walmart or anywhere else. So what you do now, see they're a little skimpy. So what you do is clip this off. Just take it off like that. That's how you do it. Take it off like that. And you discharge the rest. Now we can cut them all the way up to here. And get them all out the way like this okay cut this off I got a trash bag to put them in okay and you do them just like that and then you wash them you know you have to wash them real good and I probably would do that with you next right now I'm going to show you how to get them prepared to be washed and they are gritty. You got to make sure that they are not gritty when you cook them. 
because any little piece of grit, I promise you, you can taste it in those greens. Okay, so what we're going to do is just show you again how to just pick them off like that. Now, some people cook the stems, but I don't like the stem because sometimes the stems can be kind of tough. And then you'll be saying, I should have cut them stems. And then, you know, your guess who you ever cook them for said, well, she didn't cut the stems off the greens. She tried to save greens, you know. <laughs> That's how people talk. So what you do is just pick them off like this. And then you get ready to wash them. See that? And that's how you do those. Now we're going to put these to the side because those are the turnips. And we're going to go over here and work on the um, mustard. You cut them off like that too. And the mustard leaves are a lot bigger. So I like cut them like this too. Just take them from the bottom to the side. Cut them and mix them. Because I like to mix mine. Now you can uh, not mix them. You can put the mustard by itself. Put the turnips by itself. Because you have turnip greens and stuff like that. But I like to mix mine like that. Now see, stuff like this, that scared me. But what this is, is just a dead old green. <laughs> So that's why you're really cutting your greens and cleaning them because you don't want to cook in debris in your greens. And then, you know, you're going to cook that in there. So that's why you got to give them a good washing, a good picking. Okay, this is all we're going to show you that now. Then I'm going to show you how to wash them. So this is one part of how you get your mustard, your bottoms, and how you get your turnip greens and your mustard greens. You know how your turnip greens look. Turnip greens look like this. They look like a little fan. Now see that right there? You don't cook that. You take that off. Take that off. Don't cook nothing yellow. I don't like nothing yellow. And then you cook the rest just like this. You cut them like that. And then by the time you get them all done, it's ready to clean them. We'll be right back and let you see how to clean these greens. Okay, I wash my greens on a wa running water. I wash them on a running water. Because when you wash them under wa running water, the, the dirt and the grit runs down the drain. I just do that until they feel clean. I don't know where, uh, why people do. Some people, you know, wash them with the sink full of water. But once you wash them like this, and the, the grit will run down the sink. And they won't adhere to your green. So you rinse them like this, just like this, you wash them around so they can run, the grit can run off. You see how I hold that up there like that? There's no way grit going to run and cling to that. Just swish them around and you know when they clean, they start squeaking a little bit. So just keep washing them until you feel like they are clean. And then you do you turn a bottle the same way. I let them soak. Oh, I let them soak just like that. And then I put the turn a bottle in a different container because the turn a bottle is going to be the last to cook in your greens. This is Sandra. I want to show you how I do and how I clean my turnip and mustard. I leave the water running and the sink open so the water can run down the drain. This is Sandra. I want to say happy evening and thank you for coming to my channel. I'm ready to show you how to season the, uh, the turnip and the mustard greens and the turnip bottoms. I'm going to use some smoked turkey necks. This is what they are. They are smoked just like the smoked meat, the pork meat, like the smoked ham hocks and the smoked bacon, the smoked jowl, and stuff like that. So they are smoked also. They have that redness in there like that. That's the smoke, uh, the smoke gives it that color. And it gives it the flavor of smoke into your greens. So smoked turkey necks is what I'm gonna use. I love these because they are so delicious. They, and you can eat them. You, know, you can't eat, hardly eat a ham hock with all that grease and all that fat on them. But with these, you can eat these as the greens cook. So that's why I asked you to uh, try the smoked turkey necks, especially for those who have 
Christian belief not to eat any pork. So you can use smoked turkey necks to season your greens with. And this is what we're going to do. This is the boiling water. So I'm going to place these green, these smoked turkey. Look at that. Ain't that a big? Ooh, that's mine right there, y'all. Look how big that is. Ooh. I'm going to put that in the uh, water. Just like this. We're going to pour this into the water. And we're going to let this cook approximately one hour. Okay, now we're going to let the uh, smoked turkey next cook for an hour. So what we're going to do now, now it depends on what kind of spice that you want to put in your uh, greens. But I will use some canola oil, about one-fourth cup of canola oil to give it some little richness. So it can penetrate through those little um, turkey necks. And what we're going to do now, this is what we have here. We have a bag of greens. And we have the turnip bottoms. But the turnip bottoms are going to be last. We're not going to put them in with the greens. So we got these greens all cleaned and washed. So what we're going to do is put them in like this. We're going to put them and let them cook down. For maybe an hour. Now you can put any spice you want in there. You can put jalapeno pepper. You can put uh, any spice that you like. You know, you can put into these greens. Right now what we're going to do is just put some salt. Just some salt. Just a little, not too much. Because you don't want to uh, Sometimes the uh, turkey necks be kind of spicy. Not spicy, excuse me. Kind of uh, salty from the smoke. But sometimes they're not. So you can put a little salt, maybe about a teaspoon of salt in here. Now, a lot of people like to put uh, soda and stuff like that, baking soda in there. But you don't have to do that because you don't wash your greens real good and they're real crispy and everything. So just pile them up in there like that. If you see a little yellow spot, just take that out because you do miss some. And then what I want you to do when you put your salt in, you know, if you can keep it away from salt, don't use too much salt. Just put your salt in and then just put your top back on the greens and let them cook for about another hour. And then we're going to come back and put our turnip bottoms in there. These turnip bottoms are going to be next. Okay. Okay, as you can see, they have boiled down. They are done, but you can add the turnip bottoms in now. Now, I add the turnip bottoms in when they're done because I like my turnip bottoms to be done, not mushy. So, I'm going to let these cook about another 10 minutes with the turnip bottoms on, adding a little salt, just a little salt on them, just a little, not a lot, and let them cook down, and we will show you the finished results. Now, this is how I cook my turnip mustard and turnip bottles now a lot of people can cook them a different way but this is the country way that i learned how to cook them to appreciate the southern taste of the greens now you can saute these and you can put them in different dishes uncooked like this because they say we're boiling all the flavor out you're not boiling all the flavor out they seem boiling all of the nutrition out. You might be boiling some of the nutrition, but not all of them because you're putting those turnip bottoms back in there. So that's giving them some more nutrition. But the taste and the flavor and the texture is what I had grew up on. And I'm pretty sure you would like to know that southern style of cooking. Okay, we're going to let these cook about 10 minutes so they are tender. And we'll come back with the presentation. This is Sandra. I want to say happy eating.